Um, so Mary Rose and her unique collection of Tudor objects are displayed in a purpose-built museum in Portsmouth on the south coast of England. And together, the ship and the collection tell a compelling story of life in Tudor England at all levels of society. Here is Mary Rose under full sail. She's the key ship of a key king, Henry VIII, on the right. Uh, sunk in battle in 1545, Mary Rose was raised from the seabed in 1982, along with 19,000 wonderfully preserved Tudor objects. Of course, whenever you're thinking about a museum, you have to identify significances, and Mary Rose has multiple significances. She's the key ship of a key king. Her objects show life at all levels of society, uh, not just the rich people, it's people like you and I. And that gives us an unpre uh, unprecedented view into the 16th century. She's created from a single dramatic uh, moment in time, the sinking of the ship. And the ship and the collection form an indivisible whole that tells a story. And our interpretation ethos um, is very um, well thought through. Firstly, everything has to be rooted in the authenticity of the objects. Within the museum, we only show authentic objects that have been raised from the seabed. It had to be deeply personal. This is above all the story of the men of Mary Rose. It's all about their lives told through the objects. And we start from their stories rather than the wider context. We always start with the individual, then start talking about the profession or the context of the story. And our aim is to capture hearts and minds. We want the visitor to feel empathy with those men and to jump across the ages to be part of their stories. As I've mentioned before, the story of the everyday sailor is just as important as that of the rich officer. And we were determined to be fully accessible, not only physically, but also intellectually. There are many different learning styles and we wanted to cater for them. Above all, we wanted the experience to be completely immersive. Visitors should feel that they're stepping on board and they should have all of the sights and the sounds and the smells of Tudor life. So Mary Rose is, above all, the intensely personal story of the men who lived, fought and died on board. We tell their stories through their personal artefacts from dice, bowls, and knit combs, through to shoes and leather jerkins. And we sensitively tell stories through their human remains, using DNA analysis to establish their appearance, uh, studying their bones to understand health conditions, and creating facial reconstructions from their skulls so that we can breathe life into these individuals. Our visitors tell us that they jump across 500 years to connect with these individuals. Clearly we want to cater for many different learning styles. Of course we tell stories through text panels and through objects, but we also tell them through video, and also importantly through people. So our volunteer guides uh, tell stories on all of the decks, but they also run handling tables with replica, replica artefacts, so people can really understand how, the, how objects were used. And we do hands-on activities such as archery, interactive screens and some games as well to give a more depth of story. The experience is completely immersive in style, with dark interiors, sound effects of the sea, wood creaking and the ship's bell ringing. And you have the opportunity to smell a piece of Mary Rose rope. It certainly works. We now have a reg the regular occurrence of having to evacuate visitors who are seasick. And they, say, and they say to us, how are you making the floor move? <laughs> we also use science to tell stories. So we use DNA analysis on Hatch, the ship's dog, um, to confirm his breed, his coat colour, and the diseases he suffered with. <coughs> so in 2015, uh, Mary Rose won, won a special commendation from, from EMIA. And this was based on the previous version of the museum, which was an interim version. This version had very definite limitations. The ship was still enclosed in uh, a hot box and covered in dry, uh, giant drying uh, tubes, so she couldn't actually be viewed very well. 
In 2016, we completed major project works that realised the dreams of our founders and, and delivered the museum in the way that we'd always dreamt about it. Firstly, we've transformed the experience of seeing the ship by removing the hot box, installing full-length glazing on main and lower decks, and giving stunning views of the ship from nine galleries. On upper deck, visitors pass through airlocks and breathe the same air as Henry VIII's ship, separated only by a balcony. The smell of ancient wood transports visitors back 500 years. We use dramatic lighting sequences. The ship is bathed in blue light, giving the underwater effect, then goes to full light, then onto darkness, where the projections of the crew start. And to bring the ship to life, we now have 66 individual films of the Mary Rose crew, which are projected onto the ship. These vary between peacetime and wartime. The crew go about their everyday work, eating, drinking, cooking, and the sound corresponds to the film that's happening. This has transformed the Vista experience. This is a close-up of one of the films, which were filmed using our staff and volunteers. Each video has an individual soundtrack, so you get a different experience as you move along the decks. We also bring the crew to life with regular events, including Tudor cooking, shipbuilding and leisure activities. And this is a picture of our team firing up the Tudor galley and co cooking broth, beef, venison and bread for the crew. We also host regular Meet the Crew events, and you can see the cook coming to life on the right there. We also introduced the Tudor Rose figurehead of Mary Rose, which was excavated from the seabed in 2005. So what's been the impact? Well, so far we have 89% five-star reviews on TripAdvisor and a further 9% four-star. And you can see some of the quotes here. The whole experience left us speechless. Um, and we also run Skype sessions uh, for schools that can't reach us either within the UK and abroad. Our volunteers are a huge part of our offer. We have over 130 who do guiding, learning tours and digitizing the archive and we've supported over 2,400 days of work experience and 194 internships. Access is a massive priority at Mary Rose, and we've improved things by bringing in portable stools for visitors to carry around, and to bring a golf buddy, buggy, and you can probably see that Henry VIII sometimes uh, drives that for added flavour for the visitors. <laughs> 